This lecture is part four of the gram-negative cocci lecture. And in this lecture, we're going to focus on the organism Moraxella catarallis. Moraxella used to be in the same genus as Neisseria. After that, it became the genus Branhamella. And then more recently, it became the genus Moraxella. So over the last 10 years or so, a lot of organisms were renamed, and that's due to um, the advances in molecular techniques. So as more and more organisms were sequenced, their whole genomes were sequenced, it was then um, people were able to see that organisms that were within the same genus actually were not highly genetically similar. So they then renamed some organisms into a different genus. So that's one issue with microbiology is that the names of the organisms sometimes change and staying on top of those name changes can get difficult. Luckily it doesn't happen constantly but it happens commonly enough where it's good to have a recent textbook because for those of you that are using a textbook from just three years ago, some of the names will not be correct. Um, actually, I used to use the previous man textbook in my course, and when the new one came out, um, I learned of several name changes, and I know some of the students in, in my class that year were still using the previous version, so I always had to mention, by the way, in your textbook, this is, is actually not this organism anymore, it's this other organism. So just beware if you're using an earlier version of a micro textbook than anything that was published in 2011, you know, anything published before 2011 or 12 may not have the newest nomenclature. So Moraxella catarallis, like Neisseria meningitidis, is part of the upper respiratory tract, so it is normal flora. It is a gram negative diplococcus, just like Neisseria is. Like Neisseria, it's oxidase positive. It is catalase positive. It produces DNase, and it's non-fermentative. Um, so Neisseria will ferment certain carbohydrates, whereas Moraxella catarallis does not. It is unable to reduce nitrates to nitrite. Moraxella catarallis can be isolated only from humans. You don't, it, it has not been isolated from other animals. It is a commensal of the upper respiratory tract. It usually causes opportunistic infections, commonly upper respiratory tract infections in both children and the elderly, those with somewhat suppressed immune systems. It can cause lower respiratory tract infections in adults that have a pre-existing lung disease. So individuals with chronic bronchitis, individuals with emphysema, uh, COPD, um, any of these types of lung diseases, these individuals can be at higher risk of a Moraxella catarallis respiratory tract infection. This is the third most common cause of otitis media and sinusitis in children, so ear infections and sinus infections in children, and it can cause infection in a severely immunocompromised individual. Moraxella catarallis produces beta-lactamase, which does make them resistant to ampicillin and amoxicillin. However, it's normally susceptible to erythromycin, tetracycline, trimethoprim sulf sulfa drugs, and ampicillin with a beta-lactamase inhibitor. So you, since it produces beta-lactamase, you have to have an antibiotic or a beta-lactam antibiotic that includes a beta-lactamase inhibitor to inhibit that enzyme that the bacteria produces. And we'll talk more about these when we talk about antibiotics later in the semester. 
In order to diagnose Moraxella cataralis, the organism will grow on sheep blood agar and chocolate agar, producing small gray to white colonies. It has been described as a hockey puck because when you try to remove a colony from the agar, normally you can pull off a piece of colony. It's, it's kind of a creamy consistency. Well, Moraxella cataralis actually is more like a hockey puck. So the whole colony will move across the agar when you try to lift it up. It is usually inhibited by colistin. So Moraxella cataralis, even though it will grow on sheep blood and chocolate and it's a gram-negative diplococcus, it will not grow very well on your gonococcal selective media, such as your Thay modified Thayer Martin agar, because of the colistin that's present. It is an oxidase and catalase positive organism. We already said it's asacrolytic. It does not ferment carbohydrates. Here's a gram stain of Moraxella cataralis, and it has a similar appearance to Neisseria, where it's that more coffee bean shaped, um, can be singly, but commonly it's a diplococcus. You would see in the center of that slide, you could even see a tetrad, two diplococci stuck together. Um, under the microscope, Moraxella tends to be larger than Neisseria if you were to look at them side by side. Here is Moraxella cataralis from an ear specimen. Remember, it's the third most common cause of ear infections in children. So this is a direct smear of a ear specimen. You can see the intracellular and extracellular gram-negative diplococci. And here is the organism growing on chocolate agar. So the organism has what's called a wagon wheel appearance after 48 hours of growth. So it'll have a denser area in the center and a somewhat lighter, less dense area around the outside. And it sort of looks like a wagon wheel. So we're now going to move on to the last part of our gram-negative cocci lecture.